Special treat tonight. We're going to hear the story of the secret garden. I don't know if you've heard the story before, but when uh, my oldest girl, her name was Celeste, when she was a little girl, I had the big thick book of the secret garden with big pictures in it. And every night her daddy would read her that story before she went to bed. But you know what happened every single night? It wasn't her that fell asleep, it was always her daddy. He would read the story and he would go to sleep. So this story comes with lots of fun, happy memories from our family. Let's start The Secret Garden. It's a story about um, a little girl finding a wonderful garden. There's a lot of words. So get comfortable, okay? Mary Lennox was a very spoiled child. If she did not get her own way, she would yell and scream and stomp her feet. Mary lived in India with her mother and father and a personal nanny. One night, there was a terrible earthquake. It broke houses apart and knocked down trees and it killed many people. When the earthquake was over, the servants pulled Mary out from under a bed. She was alive, but her parents were not. They had been killed in that earthquake. Mary had one uncle and he lived in England. His name was Lord Archibald Craven. Mary was sent away to live with him at his home. It was called Missile White Manor. Lord Craven did not have time for little girls. He sent his housekeeper, Mrs. Medlock, to collect Mary. And here they are at the, at the station and here's Mrs. Medlock coming to get Mary to take it home. Mrs. Medlock dressed all in black from her head to her toes and she was a very disagreeable person. Now, you know what I mean by the word disagreeable, right? Have you ever been around somebody that's always complaining and doesn't like anything you say or do? That's a disagreeable person and you're not gonna see a smile on the face of a disagreeable person. You'll see a fan. All right, so that's what Mrs. Medlock was like. She was just so disagreeable. Huh. Mrs. Medlock looked at Mary and said, what a plain piece of goods. Oh, Mary struck her nose in the air to try to feel a little bit better. Mrs. White Manor, Manor stood all by itself on a hill. It was a very dark and lonely looking house. But oh my, was it big or was it big? And the inside was just as dark and lonely as the outside. Mostly that was because of Lord Craven. A long, long time ago, Mary's mother had a twin sister and her name was Lilius. Now Lilius was married to Lord Craven. But Lilius died in an accident. And from then on, Lord Craven was never the same. He had lost the love of his life. Early the next morning, Mary woke up in her new home. She refused to eat breakfast and waited for a servant to come and dress her. Remember, in India, she had a nanny and her nanny would put on her dress and shoes. Nonsense, Mrs. Medlock said. A 10-year-old girl should know how to dress herself. Well, that is true, right? But Mary didn't because that's not how she was raised. Well, she stood up on her bed and she yelled and screamed and stomped her feet, but no one cared. While in her bedroom, Mary heard the sounds of crying. <laughs> So Mary decided to go exploring in the, in the corner of the room. She found a small door, just big enough to crawl through. Pushing that door open, 
she came to a very old room filled with ivy. The wind whisked through a broken window and Mary found a picture of two women. They were sitting in a garden. It was Mary's mother and her Aunt Lilius. Inside a jewelry box, Mary discovered a rusty old key with a beautiful design on it. She put the key in the bedroom door. Oh, phooey, it didn't fit. Later that day, Mary sat on the floor in her room. She was still wearing her nightgown. Remember, she didn't know how to get dressed. Suddenly the door opened. It was Martha, a young housemaid. Mary thought, come on in, Martha. You must be my servant. She stood with her arms out in front of her, waiting to be dressed. Oh, Mary, Mary, Mary. Well, instead, Martha tickled her right under her arms. Mary was horrified and Martha laughed. I won't be laughed at, you servant. Mary screeched. She threw herself down on the bed, kicking and screaming, and Martha watched this little girl, fascinated. She had never met anyone who was as spoiled as Mary Lennox. The next morning, Martha sent Mary outside to play. Run along now and have fun, Martha told her. Mary wandered through a maze of gardens filled with old shrubs and bare fruit trees. Soon, she came upon an old garden wall. Now this wall was different from the others. It was choked down with ivy. From the top of the wall, a robin stared at that little girl. Standing up on her tiptoes, Mary peered through a crack. She saw a statue of a woman. Do you know what a statue is? It's kind of like the mannequins in the store. It's just a fake person. Well, more than anything, Mary wanted to go inside the garden, but she could not find a door. And then Mary spotted an old man. It was Ben Weatherstaff, the gardener. Now remember, Mary was spoiled. She didn't talk very nice. Where's the door to this garden? Mary demanded. The old man scowled. No one's been inside that place for 10 years, he snarled. The dead are dead and gone and better off left that way. Mary opened her eyes wide. Her aunt was dead. This garden must have been gone, belonged to her dead aunt Lilius. Well, one day, Martha had a surprise for Mary. It was a jump rope. Mary had never seen one before. Watch, Martha told her. And then Martha showed the little girl how to turn the things and skip on it. Well, Mary skipped right outside in the direction of the secret garden. Look at her here. She's walking that direction and look in her hand. She's got the little jump rope. Mary saw a bird flying overhead. It was that same robin. The bird poked at one spot on the ivy covered wall and then it flew off. Mary looked at that spot. Buried underneath the vines, all the little tree branches and things, there was a doorknob and a beautifully directed keyhole, a place to put the key. <coughs> it must be the door to the secret garden. Mary was excited. She knew the key at the house must be the right one. She went and got the key out of Aunt Lilia's jewelry box and raced back to the garden with trembling hands, she stuck that key in the lock. Ah! It fit, good news, good news. She pushed open that heavy door. There was a long flight of crumbling steps which led to an old pond. Flower beds filled with dead roses and leaves <coughs> dotted the ground. One by one, <coughs> Mary,
Thank you. One by one, Mary started to pluck those weeds. It was hard work, but she did not mind. From now on, this garden was going to be her special place. She made a promise to care for it always. At breakfast the next day, Mary gobbled down her food. She was in a rush. She had work to do in the secret garden. Suddenly again, she heard someone crying. Martha glanced nervously at Mary. It's the wind, Martha said, biting her lip. Before long, Mrs. Medlock, remember she's a cranky one, burst in the room. Get that child out of doors at once, she yelled. Puzzled, Mary hurried outside. A black crow flew up in front of Mary at the garden hedge. Terrified, Mary flapped her arms. At that moment, a boy appeared. He was surrounded by animals. The crow swooped over to land gracefully on that boy's shoulder. His name was Dickon, and he was Martha's younger brother. Dickon took Mary's hand. He showed her how to pet the crow. Overhead, a robin began to sing. He's glad to see you, Dickon said. People cannot talk to animals, Mary insisted. Dickon laughed. They always talk to me, he said. They tell me secrets. Suddenly, Mary was afraid. What if the robin had told Dickon about the secret garden? Mary stared at Dickon. He was the most beautiful boy she had ever seen. She wanted to trust him, too. She decided she would tell him her secret. Together, they slipped into the garden. Dickon knew a lot about flowers. And then Mary noticed an old swing. Look at her sitting on a swing. There's a picture of my mother and my aunt sitting here, she said. Don't get upset, but they say, this is how your aunt died. She was swinging and she fell off the swing. That night, Mary heard the crying again. She's lying in bed and she heard that crying. Carrying a candle, she tiptoed down the long dark hallways following the sound. At last, she came to a door covered with heavy, heavy tapestry. She turned the knob and stepped inside and a, a frail little boy lay crying on the bed. What's your name? Mary asked. Colin Craven, the boy replied. He was Mary's cousin. These children had not known about each other. Ten-year-old Colin was a sour little boy. He was convinced he was going to die. Colin had spent every moment of his life in the bedroom. Now, I don't know how old you are, but let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you're one of those ages or younger, think about spending your whole life and never, ever going out of the bedroom. How big is your bedroom? Is it as big as, you know? To have a little room to play. No outside. No going down to the kitchen to eat. No doing anything. That poor little boy. And they told him he was dying. The poor thing. Can you imagine thinking you're dying and you have to live in your bedroom? Mary thought her cousin was very rude. Well, of course. And he acted like Mary was the servant. Whoa, I've heard that before, haven't we? Then he showed her a picture of his mother and said, I hate my mother because she died. What? Will you come visit me? He pleaded. And suddenly, Mary started to feel sorry for the boy. And she said, yes, I will visit you every day. Early the next morning, Mary raced through the kitchen. Martha raised her eyebrows. This little girl had actually dressed herself. 
Dickon was already standing at the door to the secret garden. I've been waiting for hours, he teased. For the rest of the day, those two friends planted bulbs in the garden. The bulbs would grow into beautiful flowers. Mary told Dickon about her cousin. She could not believe how different these two boys were. Later that afternoon, Mary snuck into Colin's bedroom. She tried opening the windows, but they were nailed shut. Don't touch them, Colin screamed, and he told her, quick, put on a mask. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? He was afraid of germs. Mary told her cousin about Dickon and the gardens. Does he know about my mother's garden? Colin asked. Mary cl clamped her mouth shut tight. She did not trust Colin. He would tell everyone about the secret garden and ruin everything. The next day, Mary was summoned to her uncle's library. Her heart was beating wildly as she tiptoed into a very dark room. Lord Craven sat in a huge armchair. Three dogs lay growling at his feet. Medlock wants me to send you to a boarding school, he announced in a very tired voice. Mary felt sick. She could not leave this secret garden. She could not leave Dickon. Please let me stay, she begged her uncle. Wearily, Lord Craven agreed. He did not really care one way or the other. In fact, he didn't care about anything at all. Remember, he was still so sad about his wife dying. For a whole week it rained. Enormous puddles soaked the grounds of Mistlethwaite Manor. Dickon said the grain was good for the flowers, but when Mary saw her garden, it was completely flooded. It's ruined, she sobbed. Dickon had never seen so many tears, but it was not just the garden. Mary cried for other reasons too. She cried for her dead parents and the aunt she never got to meet. She cried because her uncle was so lonely and she cried for her sour cousin, Colin. One day, Mary had an idea. Colin sat in his wheelchair and Mary pushed him toward the shuttered windows. Outside, Dickon sat on his pony. The pony wore a special harness that hooked onto Colin's windows. When this pony pulled, the shutters popped off. Giggling, Mary raced down store, downstairs for the first time in his whole life. Colin felt fresh air. He felt sunshine on his face. And he opened his eyes real wide and peered out the window. And what do you think he saw? Colin saw Mary laughing with Dickon. Suddenly he grew angry and he yelled and screamed. Furious, Mary stomped back to her cousin's room. He's having a dreadful fit, Martha warned. Mary didn't care. You are the most selfish boy there ever was, she screamed. But I'm ill, Colin shrieked. Mary shouted him some more. She knew her cousin wasn't even sick. He just wanted somebody to take care of him. At that moment, Mrs. Medlock rushed into the room. Get away from him, she screamed at Mary. Colin stared at his cousin. Maybe she was right. Maybe he wasn't even going to die. I'm ordering you to leave this room now, said Mrs. Medlock. At last, Mary knew it was time. It was time to tell Colin about the secret garden. The next day, a wonderful thing happened. Colin left his bedroom. He was carried in his wheelchair down the stairs and out the front door. Dick and push Colin through an open gate. Faster, faster! That little boy actually laughed. Mary raced after the boys. She could hardly wait for her cousin to see the secret garden. At the garden door, 
the three children fell silent. It was an important moment. Mary turned the key in the lock. Colin covered his eyes. Inside at last, the little boy stared and stared. The garden was exactly the way he had imagined it. It was the most beautiful place he had ever seen. I'm gonna come here tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and every single day after that, he said excitedly. Suddenly, over the fence, Colin spotted Ben Weatherstaff standing on a ladder. He was peering over one of the garden stalls, walls. The gardener opened his eyes wide. Aren't you that little cripple? He asked Colin. Colin glared at him. I am not a cripple. And then, slowly, Colin put his thin little legs on the ground. And for the first time ever, Colin stood up. Tears began to roll down Ben's cheeks. Your mother was so fond of this garden. She would ask me in to look after her roses. He had been taking care of the garden since Colin's mother had died. And for 10 long years, he had kept it a secret. As the days passed, Colin grew stronger and stronger. One night, Mary heard a sound outside her bedroom door. It was Colin. He had climbed the stairs all by himself. Colin told Mary his dream. He wanted his father to see him walk. I want to surprise him just like this, he said. But Lord Craven was away, and how, how could they find him? Late one night, Mary and Colin and Dickens snuck off to the secret gardens, and Ben Weatherstaff followed the children. Inside the garden, Colin ran in a circle around a huge bonfire. Dickon played a tune on his pipe while Mary danced. Ben even joined in as the children chanted. They were trying to send out a magical message, a message to Lord Craven. And far away in his hotel room, Lord Craven woke up. A strange feeling came over him. I must go, he said. Back at Mistlethwaite Manor, Manor, he climbed the stairs to Colin's room. <gasps> he became very frightened. The bed was empty. Frantically, he raced outside. And then he could hear voices. Where are they coming from? Oh, over here. I think they're coming from the garden. At the doorway to the garden, Lord Craven froze. And he watched his son laughing and running. I can't believe it, he said. It was a miracle. Colin and his father embraced. Later, Lord Craven thanked Mary. You know, Mary, you brought us back to life, he said. And Mary just beamed. You know, the secret garden had worked its magic after all. And that's the end of my story. Isn't that just a most wonderful story? I hope you all could stay awake kind of long. I love you. Bye.